Hello everyone, my name is Drewchen and this is the first time that I'm creating a series and I'm decided to do that on the private server of Novdil, which is a vanilla style server and in this series I'm going to tell you the life of Dober who is as you can see a level 1 warlock um, and he is about to enter the dangerous world of Azeroth. It's gonna be a long story story all the way from 1 to 60 and as people might recall in vanilla it takes quite some time to level from 1 to 60 so um, hopefully I will finish before the launch of classic wow but it will be tough as my play time is a bit limited um, as I'm finishing my studies so it will be tricky to finish in time but I will do my best uh, and hopefully we will reach that epic moment of reaching 60 uh, before the launch of Classic WoW. Um, I, there's a, a couple of things I have to mention. Um, I haven't really leveled a Warlock before. Uh, I think the highest level that I got with a Warlock is about level 25. So it is going to be interesting for me and it also means that I'm not or might not be the most efficient player. Um, I got quite an experience in WoW but not particularly with Warlock. So if you got any uh, tips could be warlock specific or non warlock specific then just feel free to put them down in the comment below and hopefully i can improve my gameplay in that way and you're also helping out people that are planning to play in classic wow or level even as a warlock in classic wow so it would really be much appreciated if you could that, uh, put that down in the comments below um as you can see i'm here showing you my add-on list um, which I think is nice to show. Um, I think these are some kind of standard add-ons. Uh, I'm not sure what they're going to implement when Classic WoW is released and which you still have to do via an add-on. So, uh, but at least I think these are some quite good examples to keep in mind when you start to play Classic WoW. Uh, for example, you got the bartender which is for your action bar buttons and then you got this basic experience bar which uh, is used to show an xp bar because bartender 2 by itself or doesn't really handle it by default so you will need a separate add-on for that um so i'm just scrolling through the add-ons and well i think most names speak for itself but if it's not clear then just google them and you will find some information about it. So I think it's time that we can enter the world of Azeroth. Bound to the iron will of the tyrant Lich King, the vast undead armies of the Scourge seek to eradicate all life on Azeroth. Led by the Banshee Sylvanas Windrunner, a group of renegades broke away from the Scourge and freed themselves of the Lich King's domination. Known by some as the Forsaken, this group fights a constant battle, not only to retain its freedom from the Scourge, but also to slaughter those who would hunt them as monsters. With Sylvanas as their Banshee Queen, the Forsaken have built a dark stronghold beneath the ruins of Lordaeron's former capital city. This hidden undercity forms a sprawling labyrinth that stretches beneath the haunted woods of the Tirisfal Glades. Though the very land is cursed, the zealous humans of the Scarlet Crusade still cling to their scattered holdings obsessed with eradicating the undead and retaking their homeland. Convinced that the primitive races of the Horde can help them achieve victory over their enemies, the Forsaken have entered an alliance of convenience. Harboring no true loyalty for their new allies, they will go to any lengths to ensure their dark plans come to fruition. As one of the Forsaken, you must massacre any who pose a threat to the new order. Human, undead, or otherwise. So let's get going. Yeah, I always like those intros. As a first backpack, I like my half stand on the left top corner. 
Um, I did my action bars already, as you can see. So what did I do? I locked on the character, set up the action bars, uh, character with the same name, and when I log in on a character with this name again, it will just load it from that name. Uh, it's like a profile save for XP bar. Um, so uh, you see all those key bindings already down there, and I got this top part there, which I like for cooldowns. Uh, and things I don't want in the middle of my screen, I put all the way down near yeah, my character pain. Uh, like, for example, demon uh, skin. Uh, like the same, for example, in the mage, I usually put things like uh, frost uh, armor, etc., down there. Um, so, this is the first quest. It just will ask me to run down the path if I recall correctly. Um, so, what I like to do, I always like to attack mobs in between, uh, especially up to level 40, before you get a mount. Uh, especially on a warlock, I guess that's wise, because you have this slow travel, uh, you're just your running speed, and you don't have a mount straight away. So, why did I choose um, a warlock, or ward even? Uh, well, that's because I did play on a couple of private servers before, although the last one in vanilla style has been like two years ago. Uh, and usually I always play Alliance. Well, actually the first character that I ever played was Horde. Uh, so I actually wanted to go back to that memory. Uh, although that was a Tauron. But I just like Andes as well. And since I've never really left the Warlock, I thought it would be nice to just choose that class for this purpose. So that's the first two mobs down. Uh, let's continue the path. Uh, and let's see. Where I have to turn in this first quest, I guess it's in the chapel. Let's jump over the fence and let's get in there. So, let's do quest, I guess. Cause this one I have to hand in. Yes, there we go. And then I got the other one, and I guess that is something warlock specific. Yeah, there we go to get the imp. So, I'm not much of a reader uh, of the quest. Right, when I pick them up, uh, usually I just pick them up and then uh, shift click, see what I have to kill them so often, especially later on when the story gets more interesting than I actually read the quest log, so I will not do that all the time. But of course, as you remember, I don't have an, um, at least I don't, I'm not using an add-on that is showing where to go, so often I should just have to read the quest log to know where to go. But, for example, this beginning quest, I just know them by my by heart, and there's not much other direction that you can go and just begin them up. So, um, as I could see in the logging in screen, or when the story was being told by the narrator, um, is that I stalk quite a lot of people, so what I do in those cases, I just go straight away to the side, yeah, so not taking the normal path the road or etc just to avoid other people uh, especially in beginning areas where you just have well you do have quite a lot of mobs but you don't want them to be uh, attacked before you do them that's especially nasty when you are a caster simply because well you have to load with your casting and people like rogues or whatever can just instantly out of attack um, so, this beginning is always a bit boring, because you can only cast the runes after a few seconds, so at least I try to optimize it to some extent, of course, I will not be able to do it all the time. Uh, so what I would often try to do is you see my mana bar go full, and as you can see now it's going up, and now you see it's almost full, and I try to let the shadow bottle end right when the tick final tick comes in, so you just reach that full mana for like a split second, and then uh, uh, I think you have somewhat optimal use of your mana, so here I was a bit late, uh, yeah and apart from that you got the 5 second rule, so that uh, implies the, that you have to wait 5 seconds before you actually get mana regeneration. So often it's better actually, so for example now I could cast it in Shadow Ball or I'm actually doing it. I could have cast it already uh, two seconds earlier, uh, but I chose to not do so, to 
keep that mana regeneration rather than interrupting that and then have to wait five seconds again. So those are things to keep in mind when you're going to play vanilla when it's released. Uh, as you will see, I'm not going to do it all the time. And, and not, especially in the beginning area, I'm not really focusing on the fights all the time. So. Almost halfway the quest. So I'm just switching to the other quest as well. Even though I believe there is going to be a quest after this as well to kill the rebel cage skeletons, but I don't think it would matter that much to kill the three additional the skeletons because they have the almost 100% drop rate. Maybe they even have a 100% drop rate. I'm not sure. But that's the nice thing about beginning areas. The drop rates aren't too bad. Oh. So most of the time you'll just get them after each kill. So here I actually cost the shit of all but I actually wanted to keep the mana regeneration so I interrupted it by moving a bit. Okay. So just a few more, five of these and two of the others. And two more skeletons. Yeah, uh, I'm glad when I have my imp and some damage over time abilities, which what else are known for. So. so what will I be planning on doing uh, with this series? I will try to make episodes of roughly one hour each time. Um, Often that's of course not possible if I have to go in between and then I'm not sure if it's nice to fix it to one hour again. Uh, but most often I will just try to have a regular episode of one hour and we will just see how far I can come and get each episode. So in the beginning we will go rather quick, you will see me ding often but later on there will be a couple of episodes before I ding again. And if you got any interesting for me to talk about, also feel free to put them down in the comments to make the series more interesting to you. Uh, apart from me just going on about game details, it can also be non-game details or whatever you like. And I might actually just turn on some music so often. Uh, so the wife just get bored by my voice all the time. Well, music is actually more pleasant to listen to. So there you go. Don't need that one. What a page. There we go. So I'll just keep running first to max my distance, gives me some extra mana regeneration and I see we just wait a bit for some extra mana. But it was still just a second too soon to actually get my mana full. Oh, and for, with those who don't know, you can right click a mob after you cast it, because casting doesn't trigger auto attack by default. Uh, so you can either just still have your dagger somewhere in a slot or uh, right click, but there's also the default option of pressing T. Uh, as you can see, it actually just uh, unselected one of it. So people like to bind that key, but as to something else, but I prefer to keep it. Apart from mages, because mages have too many abilities that I want to bind. For what I don't know yet, so maybe later on I will just actually replace that T. Yeah. So, one more. So, let's 
let's go. Let's get this one extra kill for HP. And the guard should help me any second. Okay, they're not doing it. Apparently that's not working because I recall actually the guards helping out in these situations. And then you always hope that you still get the XP, which can be sometimes tricky. Okay, let's hand these few quests in. Hello. Bing. And there I got them in. Oh yeah, uh, I actually forgot about it, but usually it's just better to cut these things when you actually accepting or handing in another quest that you can actually do things simultaneously. It's only about a few seconds of course, that's the kind of things, but if you want to be the fastest leveler, which I'm sure I'm not, then those are really things to consider. So, let's see. Oh, you can actually... I'm not even sure if Classic has how to accept quests, but... I personally don't like it because uh, for now it would be just fine, but later on, uh, like I said, you often want to read the quest log actually before, especially because if your quest log is full, you can only have up to 20 quests in your quest log. Um, then it is rather annoying if you're just out of accepting every quest that you come along and you, you don't actually remember where you picked it up. And at least by pressing that accept button, I, I, at least for me, that's some kind of way to remember where I picked up a quest and um, that whenever I delete it that I know where to pick it up again. Of course I'm still human so I can still forget but uh, at least that's some way to remember for me. So now that I actually got my imp I can actually uh, attack multiple targets if I like and as you can see um, what I tried to do, because I, I, I leveled 100 before, uh, up to 70, so that wasn't the burning crusade era. Uh, what I always like to do is sending out my pet first, actually, uh, to, uh, to the next mob while I'm still fighting the previous one. Just speeds up fighting a little bit, so I do have to keep a bit of eye on my mana of my imp, actually. But. So what you can see is that if I... Um, well, actually, I feel there. Maybe I can show it on the next one. Because what I tend to believe is that the, if you hit your uh, emulate, which I think, or at least I heard that Wallace are not using it that often later on, if you land it right in between the fireball of the imp, the first and the second, then the mob will actually go after you in the beginning. So uh, let's see if it works here. So, here the imp attacks and now I hit the emulate, it's going for me and because I'm standing some kind of a triangle distance uh, I actually make the mob run while not hitting anyone so there we go, it's fireball and it's actually chasing me and now it actually goes for me so from this skeleton I didn't take any hits of course it's not always gonna happen it was gonna work but at least I think it's Nice. If you can let it work out. So uh, what I heard is that uh, uh, that emulate is not being used by quite well, often while leveling. Uh, I heard it had to do with the mana efficiency. So the damage output is too low for the mana put into it. Uh, But we will see. Uh, maybe I will just keep using it. I mean, at least I like the effect that you're applying direct damage and damage over time. Uh, so I believe soon enough we will get corruption, uh, which is just a dot over time. I believe it's not too long. I'm not sure what the duration is because I think they changed it quite a lot over time. So I think it used to be somewhere around 18 seconds and then they changed it to 15 and maybe even 12 nowadays. Uh, but at least with such a long uh, damage over time effect, uh, you could level efficiently but you're not killing mobs 
that quickly at least, that's what I'm suspecting right now. But I still have that experience of course, and same with Curse of Agony, which I believe is also 21 seconds or something, and increases the damage the longer it's put on a target, so uh, the last tick it's harder than the first tick, sort of say. I'm actually wondering if I'm actually killing the right mobs. I don't think these level 1 and 2s are actually dropping the items that I need. Or do they? Let's see. I actually start to doubt. She also got the slightly bigger ones. So here you see me attack the wolf and then I'm actually instantly sending the imp after it. And I hope that my imp actually... Oh well, he's dead too quick. In this case, for example, I just hope that the imp attracts the threat, so the mob actually goes for me first, and right when it starts to hit me, maybe one hit, I take one hit, it's actually going for my imp. But it's a bit trickier than the other method. Um, and as you can see, the other bot is just generating quite a lot of threat. can't recall exactly if that had to do with just shadow damage yielding higher threat, I believe so, but not 100% sure. All the disc bat wings. Let's get to the close. those wolves. Because I still need quite some pass. Oh, so maybe an, an interesting thing is how do I send my pet in? Uh, well, I still got my mouse somewhere in the middle. Well, obviously that's key bindings, which makes common sense. Uh, so you got the three buttons in the pet bar, uh, which are attack, follow, and stay, and you got the three ones on the right, um, which is aggressive, defensive. Uh, or passive, um, and I got both of these sets actually bound to uh, the buttons 1 to 3, but one of them is with shift and the other one is with control. Uh, sorry, with control, uh, it's with alt actually. So when I'm sending in my pet, there's an alt 1. I just like the button, or the combination of buttons for that. So, okay, it's not attacking it. Then it's mine. There we go. So, I don't want to go close to the road. This is a little bit crowded there. Only a few more, and that one respawn as well. I think they might actually have a slightly higher respawn rate than um, what it was used to. Classic. Actually, getting this extra work. But I should actually have to. Oh, well, actually, I do. So, I need a couple of paths. See if he drops it. Yeah, there we go. Two more pass and one skeleton. Let's go. It's Let's go for a wolf. Let's get those last two pass. So, okay, now I let them I emulate just a second too early. So I was actually just going for me rather than going for my influence. Ah oh, well, it doesn't matter too much on this level. Let's see. 
It's gonna be our final skeleton, and we have a nice bird respawn, so it's gonna be nice. So we may about there. And boom. And he's down, or almost. So let's end in these quests as well. Let's go, go, go. And as you can see, I just like killing. Actually, I should just leave the loot. I know it's only one copper. It's actually not worth it. But I'm just so used to it. And actually, what I should do is actually get my imp towards me so that I can just loot it right on top. And I hope I don't press the right button on that mod. Yes, that's good. Okay, now that's really handy then. I don't think there's any. So I should actually sell my stuff in a second. Hmm. Maybe I should have just actually done it before I'm running here. Oh, well. Those handy is these, um, well, I usually pick the one which is worth the most, uh, rather than the one that I'm actually able to use, because, well, especially in the beginning, those little armors are not really making a difference. But at the same time, in the beginning, it only is like one copper difference. But later on you will see that plate, for example, is easily worth one gold, while the cloth is only like 30 silver, so then it can really make a difference by picking the, uh, the, the one that's worth the most. So, this is where I have to end this episode, so I'm just gonna train my abilities. I think I get uh, corruption now, and I'm not sure, I think it's usually too... Yeah, it's also curse of weakness. Um, and I think what it does, it um, reduces your uh, yeah, it reduces your uh, damage. So um, because I know I'm gonna get multiple courses, I, I think I will just put them on one of the shift buttons. So this is shift one, shift two, and shift three. And I'm actually deciding to put on shift three for now, uh, but that might just change. So now. there will be more courses in that those three boxes. So um, I will log off now. Um, so that's just it for this episode. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it so far. And if you got any suggestions, tips, hints, uh, what to do for the next episode, then feel free to put them down in the comments down below. And hopefully I can make you enjoy my episodes uh, and hope you will follow me. And um, then we will continue the story of Dober next time. Um, so thank you for watching.